I recently became a cast member for a production. We were asked to come in and, and introduce ourselves to all the other cast members and to the crew. And while we were there, we were asked to introduce ourselves. When it was my turn, I told them my name and I explained that it was Sorry Day and that my story is in the National Museum of Australia and that I am part of the Stolen Generations. Another cast member in earshot introduced themselves and said loud enough, blonde hair, blue eye babies get more money than half cast babies. I turned around and said, my Lord, where do you people come from? Isn't it about time that you get some love into your soul and spread that evil stuff? They turned around and said to me, I'm really looking forward to the fight scene with you. And my reply was, remember, I always win. The director and producer withdrew that cast member from the production. Hey everyone, we hope you're having a Merry Christmas. This is Doug Kenny along with my coach and mentor, actor Andy McPhee, and I'm honored and humbled to be presenting alongside Andy another anti-bullying discussion. Hey guys, how you doing? Hello, how are you? Awesome, Doug. Hey Doug. Oh, Hello. Good. Good, thanks, Doug. How are you? We're doing good. We hope you all are having a Merry Christmas and we appreciate the time you all have taken to appear on this panel discussion. Yeah, we really appreciate it. So uh, everyone, starting with Amy, give us a rundown of who you are, where you're at, and what you're known for. Amy Morrison, thank you so much again for having me on. I appreciate it. It's wonderful to be with you all. I live in Seattle, Washington, and I was born and raised. I am a native. I didn't used to be able to say that. <laughs> and uh, my bullying started in a, in a marriage. So that's where mine came from. <clears throat> Brendan? I'm Brendan. I'm from Melbourne, Australia. And yeah, I. The first bullying probably I had was in school a little bit. I didn't get too much, but just a little bit. So I get sort of the idea of how it feels. And yeah. And just a little bit about uh, Brendan. Um, me and myself and Brendan have been working for a while coaching, but Brendan, uh, he also uh, is on the spectrum. Of, now, now, Brendan, to be clear, it's a little bit different than Doug. Doug's high-functioning autism and can you just explain to us what you're dealing with i got diagnosed with asperger syndrome so yeah it's sort of a high type of high functioning autism i guess okay as well. yeah <laughs> and the difference between doug and uh brendan is uh doug uh is very um out there uh he's he's like a race car you can't stop him till it runs out of fuel <laughs> uh, Brendan is a little bit the opposite. He's a lot calmer and quieter. So it's great quieter, to support yeah. each other. And just so the viewers will know, on the last uh, segment we had, we talked about horse therapy. Uh, Brendan at the moment is doing horse therapies. But how long have you been doing it for, Brendan? I've, yeah, I've done horse therapy for about, it would have been half a year. Yeah. And now I'm currently working with the, uh, Mount Brumby Sanctuary in Broadford is um, oh. helping horses out, and yeah, so oh, I still get a bit of the therapy as well, and yeah, and um, and we'll help at the same time. Out later on, you know, today's just a little bit of a touch on what everyone's story is. So thanks, mate. Appreciate You're it. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Paige. Hello, I am Paige Davidson, and uh, Doug, really appreciate you inviting me to be here with you today. And I have a, 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 a whole adulthood full of bullying due to obesity, but my very first bullying experience was when I was in fifth grade in elementary school. And I was actually bullied because of my body by a group of girls in several different classes. I was growing and developing and maturing in a very strange, awkward stage. 
And these girls laughed at me and made fun of me and called me horrible names. And that escalated to them trying to jump me and beat me up. And that was horrifying. And um, that started me on a path of, you know, problems with self-esteem and confidence and body image. And those problems lasted through my whole school career. I, you know, I learned that I couldn't trust people at school. I learned that school didn't feel safe mm. for me. Um, I didn't feel safe and I didn't trust who my friends were, who they weren't. I was introverted and shy to begin with. And so these were pretty deep seated problems that I had because of the bullying that I experienced. Um, eventually had some great counseling and worked a lot of things out, but bullying is, is um, just incessant and it's horrible and it causes problems that these bullies don't have any clue that, you mm -hmm. know, that they're pulling you into. So yeah, it's so true. I've never even told anybody about this incident before. I'm 58 years old, and this is the first time I've ever talked about this. Well, that's great because it's going to, uh, like we said on the last session, um, it's going to inspire other people because someone will sit there and go, oh, that's me. That happened to me because everybody's mm -hmm. different but with a similar similar journey uh, for sure. But it will it will sit with other people and go, wow, maybe I need to get on and talk about this so they can share their story and release a bit of that and help someone else, which That's is, right. I think Doug explained to you how all this started, this whole Relentless series, which has now been posted over a thousand videos. We're getting probably 70,000 views a week on certain panels, mainly bullying and mental health. But it all started because of the coaching with Doug when I saw his transformation 12 months ago of our journey and how he'd lost a lot of weight and he's into fitness and his mental health is a lot better, I said, oh, let's interview you. And that's where it started with this. So through that one person there and his journey has now inspired people around the world and brought all you people on here to share your story. So who knows where things go when you, you just meet people and start, you know, being and a stand. And just talk about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kathy. Well, hello, everybody, and thank you for including me here. And yeah, I'm Kathy Dirksen. I am from Canada, the west coast of Canada. So just up the road there from Amy, but we can't cross the border right now very easily. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's funny how I hadn't really thought about the impact of the bullying in my life until you started this conversation and asked what was the impact. And as a kid, we moved around a lot. And pretty much every place we moved, some bully found me. So whether I had some magnet on my head that just says, hey, bullies, here's the new kid. Come and pick on her. So mm. there was like daily pin to the ground and not all out punching, but direct tormenting, mm -hmm. ongoing tormenting. And, and most of that ended just because we moved again, moved on to the next place. But it... It really was then after I was thinking about it again, after this whole group of uh, talks came up and I realized too, that in my adulthood, my work experience, I've changed careers, major career changes twice now in my life. And when I think about it, they were both based on bullying. Mm. That's why I left where I was. So I actually had worked in medical genetics for 25 years and I love biology and genetics, but I literally got to a point, there was so much torment in my workplace from so many different angles that I just realized that I couldn't stay there. When the thought of staying there for another 20 years, I, my gut literally told me, no, you have to get out of here now. <laughs> and so that was where I left there. And even my most recent career change when I think about it, it really was bullying as well. It pushed me out of that one in kind of a big corporate setting where the guys up at the top just keep forcing these quotas and mandates on the people below them that make absolutely no sense. And people are getting stressed. They're getting sick. They're, you know, the mental health is suffering. Mm -hmm. And really, when you think about it, that is another form of bullying. Yeah. That when those people above in that hierarchy of power are just pushing their thumb down on the people below them. So, so thank you guys for starting this conversation because it really has made me stop and reflect on 
the impact that these different types of bullying have had on my life. So thank and you Kat, for that, That's a really great share because, see, what you just said, someone else when they're watching this will be doing the same thing. They'll be going, hang on, wait a minute, because what I got out of what you said was where you kept moving schools. And I was thinking before you said, I wonder if that impacted you in work, if you kept moving from work and then you said it, because that's what happens. And um, I was talking to a lady the other day, just randomly, and uh, she, she, we brought this conversation up because I mentioned to her what we do. And she said, that's really funny. She said, I, I'm very good at my job. And she said, my boss, I know he's got a good heart, but he also has something else going on with him. Like she, she said, when I come in dressed to a meeting, he never lets me have my say. He shuts me down very quickly and he make comments like, well, you're dressed today. You look like a librarian. I went, wow. I said, obviously there's no human resources in that company because these guys run it. And I'm not saying they're bad guys, but there's a bit of a boys club and she's the only woman there. And they're not, he's not being vindictive. It's just his comments he think are funny, but they're not funny, you know? And Well, it's funny how you say that too, though, because in my first career, and when I worked in medical genetics, it was other women that were the problem that literally would do anything they could to make everybody else look like they were idiots or to, they even set up situations to make it look like other people had done things wrong. Gosh. And then, but to the bosses, they were little angels. So the boss wouldn't believe that they had set this up. And it wasn't true. So it became this whole big thing of those that were the victims couldn't defend themselves because the people, the bosses, wouldn't believe the story because they thought that person in the middle was an angel and was a great, you know, so <laughs> those people that can, you know, really uh, torment yeah. other people and make themselves look like angels to the people above them. Yeah. And that's, it's Doug and myself, um, I got asked a year or so ago to help uh, a, a group in Ghana because I'm an actor. Um, I won't repeat myself here because people have already seen it on the other interviews, but I, I've been an actor for 30 years and a coach. So I've been asked to help certain productions. And uh, there was one in Ghana in Africa said, we'd love you to help us try and get this film up, like just you know, with my experience. And I went, yeah, I'll do what I can. And Doug came on board as well with helping with a bit of marketing and they're struggling to raise money. But the film that they want to get up is is coming from a short film called Kiss Me or Lose Your Job. And when I was speaking to Sophia, the young girl, I said, "What what's it all about? She said, well, in this particular job, the boss would, you know, all the women would come in and they'd get a kiss on the cheek every morning. And she said, I didn't like it. I didn't want him to do that. And he said, well, either that or lose your job. And she lost her job. And so they're a big stand for this, and they've made a little short film. You can find it on YouTube. Um, it's not high production, baby, but that really doesn't matter. It's behind the story, and they want to make a feature film out of it uh, eventually. So, yes, it, it, come, it comes in all forms. It can come anywhere. It, it, it's like you said, it can come from relationships. It can come from work. It can come from home. It can come from family, friends, siblings, neighbours, anybody. Like, it can come from anyone, and the difficult part is – you know, how we deal with it, which is why Doug and myself, you know, do these these interviews and set up these um, these programs so that people can relate to and go, wow, I didn't realise that's what's going on with me. And we we do say seek professional help because none of us here are qualified to, to tell people what to do, but we can share what we went through and what you went through so that may help them move on to that next era. Um, so, Doug, uh, we're just going to ask everybody again briefly how they um dealt with you know the circumstance that happened how did you move through that and how long did it sort of take you to to let go of that past uh, bullying hi my name is cameron miller and i'm the director and founder of the sean miller foundation i just want to talk a little bit about bullying because I know a little bit about that subject. I too was a victim of bullying. I was a victim of bullying in my teenage years and I become a target because of my size and uh, I was suffering from bad asthma. Not only with bullies do they affect you mentally, physically, but they also affect your schoolwork. And I don't think anyone has the right 
to affect your schoolwork. And all bullies need to stamp it out right now. I was bullied for a very, very long time, to the point where I was thrown off a moving train because I wasn't hitting back at the bullies because that's what they want you to do. They want you to react. They want you to hit back, right? That's what bullies do. They bully because they want you to hit back. And then they pushed me so, so far that I did hit back in the end. And I heard, I heard a guy really, really bad. I got into an argument and a fight, fist fight, and I broke both his eye sockets. I wasn't, I wasn't proud of what I did. I got suspended for it for a couple of weeks. But that's what bullies do. They push you to the brink, uh, you know, and that needs to stop. So I too have been bullied in my life. And I just wish that bullies out there would just stop because you don't know when it's going to come back on you and hurt you. So that's one thing you need to take, take, take care right now and think about before you bully your next target. Is your next target going to hurt you more than you hurt them? And that's my story on bullying.